Number one says, what are the points of intersections between the graphs of these functions? So intersection points are where the two graphs are equal to each other. So we're going to set these um, two functions equal to each other. So we're going to say, when is x squared times x plus 1 equal to x plus 1? And so now when you notice that there's the same factor on both sides, so we see this x plus 1 on both sides, what we're going to want to do is bring that, um, bring it all to the same side. So we're actually going to go ahead and just subtract this x plus 1 over to the other side. And so we're going to have this x squared times x plus 1, and then we're going to minus the x plus 1 and then equals zero. And I left um, this kind of factor in the parentheses here. So I just subtracted the whole thing all at once instead of separately subtracting x and subtracting one. Um, and the reason that we're gonna do that now is that now we can factor this out because both this first term and this second term have this um, factor of x plus 1 in them. So I'm going to put the x plus 1 out, or I'm going to factor that out. And when I factor the x plus 1 out, okay, what I'm left here is just x squared. And when I factor it out here, remember there's a 1 in front. When you factor this out, okay, you're just left with that minus 1. And then remember this was all equal to 0. So now what we've done is factored this and we have it set equal to zero. So now we'll be able to split these factors up. Okay, so x plus one equals zero will solve this. So we can just subtract one from both sides and we'll get x equals negative one as a solution. And then we'll be able to factor this, or sorry, solve this factor as well. So x squared minus 1. So you can either factor this or I'm just going to add 1 to both sides. And then I'm going to square root. So when I square root, I'm going to get the plus or minus square root of 1, which is 1. And let me get that square root in here just so you can see it. And so square root of 1 is just 1. So here's our solution. So these are the x values. Um, that will make this equation true. So now obviously we have a repeated one because we've got the negative one here and here. So kind of the two unique solutions are just plus and minus one. So I'm gonna go back up here and I'm just gonna write those down. One and negative one are our solutions for our x values. So we wanna find the y values that go with each of these, okay, by plugging them back into either of the two functions. Remember, these are the two x values where these functions are equal. So I'm just gonna plug it into this one because it's simpler. Okay, so we're gonna do um, plug one into here. So if I plug one in, it's gonna be one plus one, which is two. So the ordered pair one, two is a solution. And then I'm gonna plug negative one in. So negative one plus one equals zero. So negative one, zero is the other point where these intersect. So here's our two solutions. Number two, select all points of intersections between um, the graphs of these functions. So here, you're going to be able, you can just plug these in and see if they're in both um, functions. So you can do, or sorry, if they are solutions to both equations. So we would plug negative 5, 0 in here. So we're going to be doing f of negative 5. Okay, so plugging negative 5 in. And we'll be doing negative 5 plus 5. And we'll be doing negative 5 minus 2. Well, we know that negative 5 plus 5 is 0. And 0 times anything equals 0. So it's definitely in the f function um, that negative 5 gives us back 0. So now let's do g of negative 5. And g of negative 5 will be 2 times negative 5 plus 1. And then negative 5 minus 2. And none of those are going to be 0 because this is going to be negative 10 plus 1 is negative 9. And negative 5 minus 2 is negative 7. So that is not going to give us back 0. So A is not a solution. Um, then we can plug in negative 1 half, 0. So now when you're looking at when it equals out to 0, just look if this would be a 0. Instead of actually physically plugging it all the way in, go check. 
okay? So the zeros here would be negative five and two, so that's not gonna work, okay? Negative one half is not a zero, so that's not gonna force this function to be zero, so we can cross it off right away. Then let's look at D, because this is a zero as well. So does two make either of these zero, and it makes this zero, so it works in F of X, okay? Two also makes this factor zero, so the whole thing will be zero. So this one is a solution in both functions. Now, um, for these others, you're going to have to actually plug them in. So let's plug in negative 2 and see if it gives us back negative 12. So negative 2 plus 5 is 3. And then negative 2 minus 2 is negative 4. This gives us back negative 12. So it's a solution to F. Now we need to plug it into G and make sure it's a solution in G as well. So we'll plug in negative 2. Negative 2 times 2 is negative 4. Plus 1 is negative 3. And then negative 2 minus 2 is negative 4. Negative 3 times negative 4 is positive 12. So this is not going to be a solution um, to these equations. E. We'll do f of 4, see if it gives us back 18, so plug 4 in. 4 plus 5 is 9. 4 minus 2 is 2. 9 times 2 is 18, so it works in f. So now we'll plug it into g. So we'll do g of 4. So we'll do 2 times 4 is 8, plus 1 is 9. And then 4 minus 2 is 2. 9 times 2 is 18, so 418 is a solution to both of them, meaning it'll be an intersection point. Um, and then this final one, plug in 5, so f of 5. So 5 plus 5 is 10, times 5 minus 2 is 3, so this gives us back 30, so 530 is a solution to f. So then let's check it into g. So g of 5. So 2 times 5 is 10, plus 1 is 11, and then 5 minus 2 is 3, 11 times 3 is 33, so it is not a solution to G. Number 3, what are the solutions to this equation? So remember if we have two factors multiplied by each other and they equal 0, we can split them and set them equal to 0. We can't do that with negative 15. So what we're going to have to do is expand these or multiply them and then bring the negative 15 over. So let's multiply this. We get x times x, which is x squared. Then we'll get 5x here and negative 3x here. 5x and negative 3x is a positive 2x. And then we'll get negative 3 times 5, which is negative 15. So that's the expanded version of these binomials, and then we still have equals negative 15. So then let's add 15 to both sides so that we can get all of the terms on the left side. So we still have the x squared, we still have the 2x, then we have negative 15 plus 15, which is 0, and then we have equals negative 15 plus 15, which is 0. So now we're able to factor this side. And what we see here in this binomial is that they both have an x in common. So we'll factor the x out. So when we do x squared divided by x, we get x. And when we do 2x divided by x, we get just a 2. And then equals 0. And you can quick just make sure if you did x times x, you'd get x squared. x times 2, you'd get 2x. So we factored correctly. So now that we have two numbers multiplied to equal 0, we know that one of them has to be 0. So we would split and set each factor equal to 0. So x equals 0 and x plus 2 equals 0. So here's one of our solutions. And then we'll subtract 2 from both sides and get x equals negative 2 as our other solution. Number four, what are the x-intercepts of the graph? So remember the x-intercepts are when the function equals zero. So when this equals zero, 
meaning we can set each of these factors equal to zero and solve, and that'll be our x-intercepts. So here we'll end up subtracting seven from both sides and then dividing by five, so we get negative seven-fifths. Here we'll add one to both sides and then we'll divide by two to get one half. And here we'll add four to both sides to get x equals four. So we want negative seven-fifths, we want positive one-half, so that's wrong. Okay, five-sevenths wasn't one. Negative five-seven, or sorry, negative seven-fifths, positive one-half, positive four. So C is our correct answer here. Number five, which polynomial function's graph is shown here? So we can see um, the x-intercepts here. So we see that it crosses at negative two, positive one, and four. Another thing we can see is the constant. Looks like it's about seven or seven and a half, somewhere around there. So let's check the zeros first and see if, if we can find those to match. So this one we would get x equals negative one. Okay, and we wanted positive one. So x plus one is not the correct factor. So that rules out this one and this one. Okay, then we wanted it to cross at negative two. So for this one, we would get x equals negative two since it's the opposite. So we'd just subtract two over. Okay, and this one would get us positive two. So we do not want that one. We want this one. Number six, draw a rough sketch of the graph of g of x equals negative x squared times x plus two. So we can come up with our zeros here. So we would say x squared equals zero and x plus two equals zero. This is gonna give us our intercepts. So if we square root both sides, we get x equals zero. And then remember, this is an x factor twice. So this is gonna have a multiplicity of two. And then um, here we would subtract two from both sides. So we'll get an x-intercept of negative two for this one. So we can start by getting that in here. And um, let me get some numbers on here. So we know that this is going to cross at x equals 0, so the origin, and then also at x equals negative 2. We also know that our leading coefficient, so when we multiply this times this, okay, we're going to get our leading term is negative x cubed. So we've got an odd degree and it's negative, okay, so then that's going to be up on the left and down on the right. So this one's gonna start up here, okay? And it's gonna end down here. And then remember that this multiplicity two means it's just gonna touch this zero and go back up. It's not gonna go through it, okay? So if we go down here, it's gonna go back up and then come back down, okay? And do something like that. Number seven, the graph of a polynomial function f is shown. Is the degree of the polynomial even or odd? Well, we see both arrows going down. So when the end behavior is doing the same thing, then it's even. Okay, so even because both ends go the same way. And then what is the constant term of this polynomial? So the constant term of this polynomial is negative four. And that's where it crosses the y-axis or the y-intercept. Number eight, 